Why, hello YouTube! Greetings from the Lazy Iron Reviewer to the review of Masterpiece Ratchet. This is also the review I streamed start to finish, so you all got to see this being made and uploaded. How neat is that? Anyway, MP30 Ratchet. Ratchet is a Datsun Cherry Vanette, one that is made in the late 70s, early 80s, and is definitely quite the hefty vehicle. This particular version has been converted into an ambulance, and it's actually one of the reasons I like Ratchet so much. I kind of like the whole medical field, and, well, fun fact, I used to train as a healthcare assistant. I kind of sucked at it, mind you, and now I work for... Ah, well, I guess we're off topic now, so I guess you'll never know! Ratchet! This particular version has had Toy Hacks Repro labels applied, and, well, to be honest, I haven't really seen this guy without them as they came pre-applied, but, man, do they ever look good. From all the photos I've seen before, I am definitely a full support of the look, especially on the back window. It just blends in so dang nicely. On the back, we get a nice chrome bumper, and check it out. For the first time since MP10, we actually get a chrome tailpipe. Awesome. And now it's time for obligatory, obligatory functionality. functionality. Just back prime on up, open them old doors, and then bring Ratchet up. But what's this? He certainly won't fit with that light bar having a grand old time up top. The engineers thankfully saw this too, and have included a spring-loaded mechanism to retract the light bar. So pop it on inside, and Ratchet slides right on in there. Except he would. Except he doesn't. His light bar doesn't quite make it all the way, so he does get stuck still. Point is, he can make it, I do promise that. In fact, here's Ironhide for proof. But the problem is, Ratchet's light bar actually ends up getting stuck on the tabs to keep the trailer closed. Oh well. I don't really mind him not fitting. However, someone else he actually does fit into is MP22 Ultra Magnus. I can't say I exactly expected this, but I'm really glad he does. It makes Magnus just that much more versatile that he can pull four vehicles and have them all fit no matter what size they are. As long, of course, they're not Inferno or Prime. Obviously. Oh, and Ocular Max Sphinx. Though I guess that could top load, I suppose. Man, I do need to get me one of those. For size comparison, G1 Jazz, MPB, MP Blue Streak, MP Sideswipe, MP Ironhide, MP Prime Tremagnus, GDO Cliff Jumper, Titans Return Blur, and I guess why not, a Gundam. Another thing he comes with is a plethora of accessories. Like, a bunch of them. The sled itself, affectionately named the Med Sled by one of my subscribers. Man, we gotta find a name like that for Ironhide's sled. It's actually a throwback to the original toy, where the entire back half of the van came off and did that thing. Thankfully, though, this isn't the back half of the vehicle, and actually its own dedicated thing, which is awesome, and I love it so much for that. Now, most of these accessories don't have any use whatsoever in vehicle mode, save for two, these being the pistol blaster things. These actually go underneath the vehicle in the gaps near the back of the van. Why is this amazing? Well, every gun I've ever seen in Transformers that is undermounted weaponry has been one of three things. Generic gun storage, an engine, these were neat in concept, or most commonly, a muffler. Iron Hide or Ratchet? This is the first time ever I've seen weaponry pass off as leaf springs. That's right, the guns for the Dats and Vanettes are rear suspension. How amazing is that? I can't be the only one freaking out here, am I? This is awesome! Okay then, all this awesome has to amount to something even better, right? Let's go to robot mode and find out. Start by pulling up the back section of the vehicle. Pull out the side windows that contain the arm assembly. On the bottom, fold in the rear wheels into the space left behind. Fold around the fenders, fold down the side skirts and separate the legs. Extend the thighs out one click from the shins and then spin around the shins. On the feet, fold the bumper down to make a heel and then spin around the toes. Pull up the window assembly and bring the arms out. Open the forearms and unfold the fist. Extend the arm, fold up the side panel and then close up the arm and then fold the whole assembly on both ends. On the top, fold up and around the roof of the vehicle. Pull out and swing around the rear window and slide it over top of everything. Push down the tabs that lock the arms into place, rotate the arms up, and then swing them out and down. And then swing around the front windshield to make a chest. At the hips, pull out the side fenders, rotate them up, straighten out the waist, push the fenders together, and then make butt cheeks out of the tires by folding and tabbing the wheels into the waist. Lastly, fold down the bumper, and here we have them, Ratchet! First things first, I've never liked the hip skirt fenders. Not in test shots, not in promotional shots, not in other people's reviews, not in person, and not even in my own reviews. They gotta go. Some people have gotten used to them, that's great. I haven't and never planned to. Especially when there's a company making a solution maybe possibly one day, and otherwise there's been two extensive modifications showing it could have been done better. 
So for now, open the butt, remove these three screws, remove the screws from the white things inside, close it all back up, and much better. At least to me. I've seen a bunch of fan modes that take the fenders and kind of wedge them into places. I don't like that, and won't be doing it, but for now, they just go aside. Otherwise, I actually really like Ratchet. I never thought I would, but he quickly grew on me. He's a pleasant amount of rotund. He looks accurate enough for my tastes. I love the simplistic design of his shins with their soft, blocky nature. Arms look good. Head looks good. The only thing bugging me is the chest, and he's got that whole hourglass shape going on. One with a slightly more attractive shape. It just came to me, from who knows where. And that whole hourglass figure could have totally been skipped had they just done what this guy did and made the chest completely cuboid and the tires make up lumber support. Is it a deal breaker? Absolutely not. I still accidentally love this thing, but it is a minor annoyance for me and will continue to be so until someone is able to mass reduce a fix for it. For size comparison, Combiner Wars First Aid, Masterpiece Bumblebee, Masterpiece Wheeljack, Masterpiece Smokescreen, Masterpiece Tracks, Masterpiece Ironhide. Oh, and dare I say it, he scales dang near perfect with Masterpiece Ironhide. Who'd a thunk? And lastly, Masterpiece Optimus Prime. Now, the med sled, a whole tray of accessory goodness. As for the accessories, he has two pistols, a laser scalpel, cyber spanner, but I'll be calling this a hyper spanner because I'd be a Trekkie, your standard pair of wrenches, probably universally as it would suck to have two double-ended wrenches be exactly the same size all around. I doubt Bumblebee is using the same nuts and bolts as Ultra Magnus. Repair beam emitter and arc welder, with a little blast thingy that plugs into either tip. X-ray blaster, static laser gun, and lastly, a G1-esque missile launcher. Using all these accessories, you can recreate some pretty great scenes and make up your own too. Like that time when Ironhide, Ratchet, and Prowl totally bit it. Pointing and shooting. Or, if you want to switch things up a bit, shooting and pointing. By the way, be careful when sliding things into the hand for use, as I don't actually know where Ratchet's right thumb went. If anyone's buying the inevitable KFC articulate hand for Ratchet and you have no idea what you want to do with your right hand, I would gladly take it off you because I do need to replace this thumb. Anyway, other things you can do. Have an arm-mounted welding thingy for repairing Mr. Snooty himself. Otherwise, it's a Space Ranger blaster. Repairing Mr. Snooty again. Ratchet's lost his arm, he got it replaced with a really cool machine, and repairing Mr. Snooty. What do you think you're doing? I, um, needed this hyperspanner and, and this wrench. First of all, it's a cyber spanner, and if you don't know the name, then you must not know how to use it. Put my tools back. I'll just be for a quick sec. I said, put my tools back. Huh, well, uh, when you, when you put it that way, you'll never catch me alive! Alright, time to finish building this- Ow! Put my stinking tools away when you're done with them! Another thing Ratchet comes with is another face. One's all serious and stoic, the other's all happy. Get your lighting consistent, unlike what I have going on here, and you can have them talking, or laughing, or just neutral. Hours of fun! What I don't like about this feature, though, is the stupid faces fall out of the head at the drop of the hat, and he looks weird without the face. Anyway, combine all that with some of the Iron Hide's item, and you're ready to go to Septicon hunting with a jetpack, some guns, an arm-mounted blaster, and everything. Man, he really is a space ranger now, isn't he? So that was Ratchet, quite the amazing figure, despite a few flaws, and the toy hacks definitely help a lot with the red detailing, and most importantly, an actual red cross. Articulation features a head on a ball joint for up and down a full spin movement, arms on a Ratchet for rotation, bicep swivel, 90 degree elbow, which kind of stinks, but I doubt it could have been helped, arms on a Ratchet for outward movement, what a weird combo of joints, Ratchet in places I've never seen before and friction in other places, but I'm down regardless. Waist rotation, which is kind of cool they were able to do it, considering how all the parts transform and move and stuff. Legs go forward, front skirts move, and legs go more forward. They also go out, and doubly so if you remove the front fenders. Knee joint, though using it hinders thigh rotation, which he also has. And an amazing foot! Featured as forward and backward movement, and side-to-side -side tilting action. That is intense. And away, that's been MP30 Masterpiece Ratchet. He's a stellar figure, despite the flaws and one I actually came to enjoy. And I really didn't expect to. I love how roly-poly the guy is. I love the height of bot mode. I especially like the vehicle mode. And in general, he's just a great toy that if you can forgive the flaws, man, is he ever worth picking up. This has been the Lazy Eyebrow Reviewer.